one of the videos that came out of North Carolina that you all commented on and lots of people were sharing around was this uh, helicopter from the, it ended up being from the North Carolina National Guard that seemed to just spray supplies all over the place at one of the camps. Um, we actually yep. have that clip. Let's roll that real quick. And I want to get your assessment of what happened there. Okay, uh, so you see everything flying everywhere. My understanding is some of your organization's supplies were in that. Um, for what it's worth, the response from the North Carolina National Guard is to say that during an operation where uh, where they were delivering generators at the request of a local civilian organization while attempting to land, rotor wash caused items to blow away. We, the crew immediately identified the situation, aborted the landing for safety reasons. This incident is currently under investigation and the crew has been grounded until the investigation is complete. This statement was released last week. There haven't been any updates that I've been able to find. Uh, but what do you know about what happened here? And also what the hell is rotor wash? Sorry, maybe rotor I'm wash, just Rotor wash is like if you have a... Uh you know, like a box fan and you turn it on and you put your face in front of it and you feel that, you know, the, the, the prop, the prop of the helicopter the rotor will make a, a, a wind wash going downwards or whatever direction it's banked in. Um, and so it's just like a giant fan blowing things that can be, you know, probably it can create, you know, maybe 60, 70 mile an hour winds, depending on how close it gets, maybe more. Um, it's the, it's the lift that keeps the helicopter in the air when you pull the collective and it rises that's what pushes it off the ground. So um, that's what everybody was feeling. And you saw the uh, things that weren't, you know, nailed down, basically getting blown all over the place. So, you know, as far as my reaction, you know, the initial reaction was I was severely pissed off because um, we had people down there. We're trying to help out. Um, we're getting uh, reports about people being stopped by officials to from delivering aid. That didn't happen to us directly. Um, but we had heard about it. And then when I saw it, the first thing I thought was that it might've been some kind of like intimidation tactic, um, because we've been able, we were able at that point to sort of operate not with impunity, but like we were not being stopped. Right. Um, and I thought that there were some people starting to say like, well, you know, I started reading online comments like, well, you know, these people getting stopped. How come the Cajun Navy's not getting stopped? And we're like, we don't know, but it's not happening, right? You know, I mean, I don't know. It's because they already know who we are. I mean, it could be a number of reasons, but I thought maybe that was like a flex. Um, and and that was pure speculation on my part. I probably should have uh, waited to before we started reacting so much. So, so, so now, because of where we are, I'll be. I'll try to be a little more measured in my response. I still believe, um, as a pilot, looking at the video and as other videos besides the ones the one that you showed, uh, that are a little clear to me, um, that there, the pilot, as far as like the generator, so the generator story, I don't know if there was generators in that Black Hawk. I know if they were delivering to, to a civilian organization, I know it wasn't us. We already had generators. Um, and we didn't, didn't, there was nobody from our organization that contacted the National Guard or FEMA or anybody else requesting generators. As a matter of fact, FEMA, whenever in the beginning, when they were, they were asking me, what do y'all need? Y'all need supplies. And I, we would say, no, we have enough supplies. Send them to, you know, send them to somebody that needs them. We have enough. Um, so it looked like, um, they were trying to look for an LZ. Um, from what I was told, I don't know if it was visible in the video, but I was told by my people that were on the ground there that they were throwing up arms, X arms, you know, which means don't land. And at some point they got close enough to where, you know, they could see the crew in the windshield, but they, at some point, they obviously aborted the land, um, in which case at at the, the altitude they were, I think some rotor wash would have been inevitable, but they weren't directly over the camp, if you will. There was a, it looked to me, again, this is just my perspective as a pilot, it looked to me like there was a, a bank and a pitch aft, which means he tilted to the left and then tilted back, which created sort of like a controlled you know, uh, uh, 
sort of redirecting that rotor wall straight down to more diagonally toward the camp. That's what made me angry. Uh, and that's what made me think that it might have been um, sort of like a response to uh, them telling them not to land, right? And also know just from being friends with Blackhawk pilots that have served in combat zones over in the Middle East, um, you know, they come across potential hostile encampments. And one of the things they would do if they were not given orders to engage like with, with, you know, with, uh, violence, I guess I would say, um, they would do what, you know, what some people call like a desert, a, a, what do they call it? A, a, a desert colada or something like that. It's basically like you come down close, get the prop wash and it stirs the sand up and creates almost like a sand tornado and just gets in everybody's eyes and blows stuff everywhere. But these are, these are bad guys, right? So it's like, we can't shoot them. So we're just going to screw up their camp. Right. So I know they're used to doing that. So that's another reason that made me think that it might've been intentional. Having said all that, I don't know that it was intentional. It is being investigated. Um, they've already asked me, or I say some, some people have already asked me, uh, asked us if we wanted an apology from the pilot. And I said, no, I said, we want to ride in the Blackhawk. We don't want an apology. Um, because <laughs> the last I thing mean, I, I want, yeah. the last thing that I want is for a, a, a U.S. Army pilot to have to worry about creating a public relations scandal and letting that get in the way of his job. Like, uh, yeah, it's all kind of beside the point. That would just be like the petty. I f- kind of find this current culture that we're in where people are so focused on the the PR side of it, the apologies, yeah. the demanding the apologies. It's like, yeah. I'm sorry, like people are people have lost their homes. Like people have lost their family exactly, members. Exactly. Yeah, there's way bigger fish to fry. But, uh, yeah. but yeah, but I, I don't want to be the reason it's why. The problem, you know, I don't like, want to. Yeah, I don't want to be the reason why soldiers got to apologize. Like, it's just not what I'm it's not what I'm into. So um, but I was like, yeah, but if they want to give us a ride, I'll, I'm, I'm, I'm going to take it, you know. Um, so. <laughs> Like I said, North Carolina National Guard, it's their soldier, it's their pilot, it's their helicopter. They're investigating it, whatever they come up with. I don't even know if they have a an obligation to release what they find to the public or not. I don't know. But whatever comes out of it is is what's going to be, right? None of us have any control over that. Does it seem feasible? Like, you know, I'm just a layperson here. Does it seem feasible that it's an incompetence thing, not a malice problem? There was a lot of people saying that, that, well, these pilots aren't that trained and this and that. I'm like, dude. The, the Blackhawk pilots are like the top guns of the rotary wing. Like if you got mm-hmm. a pilot that has like low time and low experience, you put them in a much cheaper helicopter. Okay. Mm-hmm. You can build a school for what it costs to buy a Blackhawk. Right. So you want to put your best guys in that. So do I think it was incompetence or lack of training? I did. You'd have a hard time convincing me of that, you know? That's and right. if it was a situation where, uh, he was trying, this is the only, like, this is the only accidental scenario I would buy. That he was coming in fully expecting to land. When he saw the no land signal, he quickly aborted, he maybe too quickly aborted his land, pulled the collective, and that caused the aircraft to become unstable. And he was able to gain control, but not before making those maneuvers, which pushed the prop wash in the direction of the uh, of the camp. I would buy that. That's possible. Um, do I think it's because he's inexperienced? No, I think he just made a quick move and I fly planes. They don't always do what you tell them to do. You know what I mean? You just try to gain control and and keep going. The fact that it even crosses your mind that this would have been some sort of intimidation tactic is kind of telling to me because you've worked in these situations before. I mean, is that, are these sort of weird turf wars or like flexing as you put it? Is that common in these kind of situations? Not with Blackhawk pilots. It's not. Um, yeah. Not with the National Guard, it's not. You know, we come across, um, you know, sometimes you come across law enforcement um, and EOC people that, uh, oh, you know, most of the time they're happy that we're there and they accept the help. Sometimes they're like, hey, guys, we appreciate you being here, but we got it, you know. And and then sometimes they get really aggressive and, you know, like they're angry that we're there or whatever. And then that, you know, I tell my guys all the time, like any local tells you to stand down just go find somebody else that needs help they you don't have to argue with them you don't have to tell them how to do their job that's just gonna make things worse um so yeah i had an eoc director in florida call me up and obviously a young dude fresh on the job and boy he was just some kind of pissed off that we were there um and uh i just had to tell him man look you know we we and, you know he kept saying he kept accusing us of self deploy and then he started quoting all the, you can take all these FEMA courses to get these certifications and stuff and they talk about self deployment and all that and this guy literally 
was must be fresh off these classes because he was quoting them. Um, but I explained to him that like we didn't self deploy. We get directly contacted by people who need help. And on top of that, we're invited by Lowe's to come on their property and set up this this supply relief drive. So if you want us out of your county, you got to go tell Lowe's that they got to kick us off their property. Good luck, you know. Um, so you get some little. Bet. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I hear what you're saying about the yeah. um, you know, the un that it's unlikely that someone as well trained as uh this Black Hawk pilot would right. just be incompetent. Yeah. The reason I never underrate government incompetence more broadly is because I also saw images like this where the government was apparently delivering electric chainsaws to communities that had no power. And uh, I mean, you know, you can use a generator to charge up a chainsaw, I guess, but it's like very stupid to do that. Yeah. <laughs> so like, how would it, an, an emer like, why would an emergency disaster specializing organization, how do you explain things like this when, when you see it? Well, I just think back to that somebody somewhere in the Department of Transportation decades ago decided that it would be a good idea to install an ashtray on a motorcycle. You know what I mean? Like there's all kinds of decisions we can scratch our head at. I mean, when people yeah. say, you know, what's it like to work with the government in these kind of disasters? I say, I, I invite you to recall every experience you've ever had with a paper straw. That's what it's like, you know? Mm -hmm. So why, um, <laughs> the, you know, the, and look, those particular, uh, we, I saw that picture of those electric chainsaws and I looked up those models and yeah, you can charge them up with a generator. They are portable. But the runtime on them is like an hour. You need more than that to, uh, and some people say, well, you'd need, you know, power for an electric generator. Well, yeah, but it's going to run a lot longer before you got to recharge it. You know, all you got to do is keep fuel in the generator and you can run the chainsaw. Presumably you got a big enough generator. So, um, so yeah, it's just somebody somewhere It's people in government who make important decisions based on, uh, 99% theory and maybe 1% application, and it really should be the other way around. Hope you enjoyed that clip from Just Asking Questions. You can watch another one here or the full episode there. We have an audio version of the podcast, which you can subscribe to using the link in the description and subscribe to Reason TV for notifications when these episodes go up every Thursday. Hope to see you then.